Okay, this is a, a really, hopefully brief, um, demonstration of how, uh, I believe it was Impact Blue could generate a graph similar to the one, the example that he gave on Reddit, which I think I have here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. So we want to generate a graph that, that shows something like this. We got 0 to 100, 0 to 100, two different regression lines through two different categories of data. So what I've done is just loaded the spreadsheet that um, Impact Blue sent to me into SPSS. Now I'm using SPSS 20, which um, is by far the best version I've, I've had so far. I've been using since 17 or so, and uh, 17, or 20 is the first one where I really feel that they got it right. So um, anyway, the first step in generating that kind of graph would be to categorize the, all of the cases here, which are the rows, into the two different categories, urbanization 40%, and and 60 percent so the first thing i'm going to do is go into uh, transform and recode my data into different variables so i'm going to take one variable and turn it into a new variable based on uh, based on the categories i want and i'm going to be using the urbanization score and i'm going to turn that into something like urban category and um, SPSS in general makes you do this quite a bit. You have to click things like change and apply when you when you input a new um, a new specification. All right, so now I'm going to choose my um, values of urban score that are going to turn into my categories. The first one is going to be from zero through 40, and I'm just going to call that category one, and add that. So now you can see that it's saying that anything from zero to 40 is going to become category one, and then my second one is going to be from 40 to 60. Now notice that I have a boundary issue here. I've got 40 included in both of them. Uh, the obvious question would be what would happen if somebody has a score of 40? And the answer is, I don't know off the top of my head, you'd have to experiment and try that out. Okay, so I've got two categories that are going to be made. Now I just click continue and okay. And notice now that I have a new variable urban category. If you are above 60 in your urbanization score, since I didn't specify anything, the category will be blank. Otherwise you've got one, meaning 0 to 40% and 2 meaning 40 to 60%. Now for my graph and for you know graphing in general and SPSS in general you want to define the properties of your variables and these aren't really defined yet so I'm going to do that next. You go to data define variable properties and I'm concerned with urban category, urban score, high school, actually I don't really care about urban score, crime. So crime, high school, and urban category. Click continue. Now um, in a graph situation, you don't really care about decimal places in general. So what I'm going to do first is change my decimal places to zero for high school and also give this variable a label. So this is going to be, even though the uh, you know high underscore school is the name of the variable, we want to make it something uh, much more aesthetically pleasing. So we'll change it to high school and indicate that it's a percentage. And with crime, I'm just going to leave it as is. Crime already has a zero on the decimal places and it has a uh, has a single e easy variable name, so the label is going to be the variable name. That's fine with me. Put the zero decimals here. I like that. And then here, I'm going to change this to urbanization for my variable label. Now, I'm also going to add value labels here, 0 through 40% for category 1, and 40 through 60% for category 2. It doesn't really matter since we're going to have these labeled, but as a matter of habit, I usually change decimals to zero unless I have a reason to have the decimals there. Okay, I click OK. I get my annoying pop-up of output. This can be turned off if you don't like it coming up on your front screen. Now notice that um, the looks of these variables have changed. Now I've got my urban categories, just a single decimal, and my crime in high school have done that as well. And I can also use this button here, value labels, which will actually display the labels of the values, not the values themselves. Click that, and now the ones have become zero to 40 and the twos have become 40 to 60. Now the next step is actually generating the graph. And to do that, you just go to graphs and chart builder. And this is where um, I think SPSS shines. I use this quite heavily because it is so intuitive to build a graph very quickly. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is see how our data are spread. So you just drag in the data point icon here, which just means each datum is going to have a single value, a single um, glyph on the graph. And we just drag in our axes as well, high school percentage down here and crime over here. Now we want to make sure that we color the two data sets based on their urbanization category. So I'll click on grouping stacking and then it says set color. Well, I'm gonna have the color be determined by that category variable I made before. I can also change the um, scaling of the axes, why I want to go from zero to 100. And again, you have to click apply sometimes, do that now. It'll warn you if you don't. 
Same thing here. I'm going to go from 0 to 100 again. And now I just have to click OK and we'll see how this graph looks as is. So you can see that these data are not very linear, but we can actually investigate how linear they are by double clicking on the graph to enter the graph uh, chart editor. And to add uh, regression lines, which is again, bringing back the example, what was being looked for by the original uh, poster on Reddit, all you have to do is click this button here, add fit line to subgroups, subgroups meaning these two here. So I'm gonna add my fit lines and it popped in the uh, fit lines on my subgroups and also gave me the R squared values, which to be honest with you are not very good fits at all. So um, at this point you could question whether or not you wanted to use a linear regression on these data. Um, that's not my decision to make, that of course is yours. Uh, you can also do editing on, on the graph by you know, deleting things you don't really care about. Uh, let's say you want to change the size of your key you can, or the position, you can drag it around, change the size of it if you'd like. You can also change the graphing area, or if you want, change the entire uh, graphing size. And you notice that I just uh, transitioned from resizing just the graph inside this white area to the whole white area. That was done by pushing up and down. That kind of goes to levels of organization in a graph. So right now I'm just looking at the graphing area inside the entire page. And if I push the up key on my keyboard, now I'm resizing the entire page on which the, the chart will appear. So I'll click down, I'm back down to just the sizing of the, of the graph itself. And you can also navigate around by just clicking on appropriate areas of the page too. Now, these lines don't look exactly like the ones that were supplied because these ones, let's say, don't go back and, uh, all the way to zero and also don't go all the way up to 100 on the x-axis. So how would I do something that on, uh, lines that only fit inside the bounds of the data themselves? Well, to do that, I would personally choose a linear regression in order to obtain the values of y along this line for each of the given x's in the data set. And I can show you how to do that. It's actually pretty easy in SPSS. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back to my data set and go to um, data and split my file. So the split file basically allows SPSS to consider subsets of your data depending on a, a given variable that's used to split them, or variables. You can actually cross-split by a number of variables. So I'm going to consider the different urban categories as separate sub-data sets. Click OK, and you know, it just lets you know, split layered by urban category. Now I'm going to, and also notice that it has sorted the data set when it splits it. So I've got my 40 to 60s down here, 0 to 40s, and of course the higher than 60s, which I'm not really considering. Now the next step is going to be go to uh, analyze and regression and choose linear since we want a linear fit. And of course the dependent is going to be the crime rate, the y variable, and the independent is the x. And now I'm going to want it to save, slow down here, save the unstandardized predicted values. So that just means regress the data, then predict based on a given x what the y for that x would be. Click continue. This is going to create a new variable that contains the uh, y values along that line. Click OK. It gives you a bunch of statistics on the regression. Um, since you're not asking about stats, I'll just stick to the graphs. Notice that we have that new variable now. And I'm actually going to leave this with a bunch of decimals just to show you something else. Um, I'm going to go back into Chart Builder. I'm actually going to reset everything. Now notice that it did save what I did last time, so I can make modifications and get a slightly different graph. But I'm just going to wipe everything out, the reset button and start fresh. First, instead of using um, each individual data pointed as a glyph, we're going to use a line plot. Again, we are going to use the high school down here, but we are going to use this unstandardized predicted value over here on the y-axis. Now, I'm not going to um, change any of the properties of this variable, so it will look kind of messy at first. Like before, we are going to group by urbanization score. So let's, oh, and change the axes real quick, just like we did before. Um, actually, I'm not going to. I'm going to show you how to do that inside the graph. And now notice I left split variables on, and that was a mistake, because now I have two graphs with two different lines. I don't want that, so I can easily turn splitting off by going to my recall recently used dialog button. Looks like a little pause with an arrow. Go to split file, turn off splits, then again using my recent dialogs, go to chart builder, and just click OK to regenerate the same graph. Now there is the graph of the data that show the lines bound by the data themselves. But notice now that I have quite a lot of um, 
of changes on this on this graph compared to before. So I'm going to go in and edit those manually in the chart builder. The first thing I'm going to do is click on the X axis here and change the scale from zero to 100. So this can be done either when you make the graph or when you um, have the graph already generated. I'm also going to get rid of these lower and upper margins. The next step is going to be doing some modifications to the Y. Again, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to change it from zero to 100 and also remove the upper margin. This can just be to your taste. And I'm also going to get rid of all of those needless decimal points changing the decimal places on the num number format to zero. Now I still also have to um, change my y-axis label and that's easy, you just have to click on it just like you're renaming a file in Windows and uh, change this to just crime. Now even though this isn't the true crime rate, the graph you specified showed that it was, uh, actually you didn't have a label, but uh, you know you can label it as whatever you want. Just as before I can expand the size of this to be a little bit more uh, full in its its window here. And I can also add a title like the original poster had on the example graph. It was what, crime rate depending on level of education. Now notice that when it did this it resized the whole graph and doing so made the key too small to display all the information. So you just have a little ellipses here. Easy to fix. Just expand the size of your key. And you can actually disable the legend really easily just by clicking the button and uh, adding it back in will revert to the default size of your graph. So doing that, obviously, you just have to drag that back out. Okay. So um, once you do uh, get some practice in this, I think it's a lot faster and a lot uh, more aesthetically pleasing than an Excel chart. You can customize this quite a bit more than any Excel chart that I've ever seen. And you can also get quite complex because there are syntax uh, commands that are generated for every step along the way. And you can modify those syntax as you learn SPSS programming and make quite extravagant and detailed, uh, or I should say complex graphs that, uh, although complex, still uh, relay the information in a pretty simple way. So the help file has decent documentation on that. There's also a couple forums you can go out there and learn on it. Um, I am completely self-taught in this, so um, I can speak from experience that it is possible for you to just pick it up from no experience. And um, for me personally, at least, it completely has displaced Excel in all of my data analyses, and uh, perhaps it'll do the same for you. All right, thanks.